On an afternoon in November 2007, a corporate jet waited in a hangar at Salt Lake International Airport. Its four passengers, scientists and executives from a global pharmaceutical company, were locked in negotiations with three men in a nearby building. They started getting on the phone about noon back east, and they kept doing that, and about two o'clock they walked in the room and said, uh, okay, we're convinced you've got something here, and it's significant enough that we will write you a check big enough that you won't want to talk to anybody else. We said, we'll call you tomorrow. And we immediately adjourned into our conference room again to discuss the offer that they put on the table. How these men came together and the decision they made that day is the story of Asiya's genesis. A lot of uh, people have fathers that teach them sports. My father happened to be a great strategist. And from a very young age, I recall having discussions with him about what he was doing. At the time, he was running fairly large companies. And uh, I can remember driving in the car with him and him talking to me about strategy, about what is strategy and how to think differently about a company. Virtus Norton was well qualified to teach his son. At the time, he was sales planning manager of the billion dollar beverage division of General Foods Corporation in New York, with responsibility for iconic products like Kool-Aid, Country Time, and others. In 1985, he was recruited by Dart and Kraft and eventually became the head of Hobart Corporation US near Cincinnati, Ohio. Five years later, he rejoined Kraft General Foods in Chicago as vice president of the Channel Group, managing a billion dollar pilot business unit that led to the eventual integration of General Foods, Oscar Mayer, and Kraft Foods. Based on his track record, Virtus was asked to help re-engineer the company to increase efficiency in relation to an industry-wide initiative called Efficient Consumer Response. In the subsequent three years, Kraft's ECR, or efficiency rating, moved from 10th to first place. I've known Virtus for over 25 years, and it was apparent to me immediately that here was a very special man. A man that had wonderful ethics, great business strategies, enthusiasm. There was no question that this man was going to be a huge success, and he is a success. Virtus retired from Kraft at age 57 and moved to Park City, Utah. We thought he would take retirement seriously. He did not. Shortly after doing some service for our church, he was asked to run a biotech company. He had a lab in Southern California, five PhDs reporting to him, a series of masters or graduate students as well, all doing work for him there. And uh, he ran that for four years, and we thought he was done. But Virtus Norton was not done. Through his son, Tyler, Virtus was introduced to another biotech company and invited to become a member of their board. I recall coming to the house one afternoon only to find books strewn about his desk, chemistry and biology books, and I said, now what in the world are you doing now? And he proceeded to tell me that he had been invited to sit on the board of this company that had an incredible technology. That, uh, and I, I do recall him saying, but they don't know exactly what they have. And that's, a, that's an invitation to my dad. He's going to figure it out. He's a puzzler. Uh, I was intrigued until they told me it was made from salt water. And I told them, this doesn't sound right. And uh, you're going to have to convince me it's real. They said, well, we can do that. They said, uh, we have a lot of research. And we'll give you some of the best research. You can look at it. And after running a lab and having my association with these people for four years, I knew what to look for. And I went through the science, and it was good, defensible science. Then they gave me a list of people to call, and I was calling Harvard, UCLA, University of Washington, University of Indiana, uh, major labs across the United States. And everyone I talked to raved about the product, the way the company was intending for it to be used. 
And also they raved about the fact that you could drink this product and get a benefit from it. At the time, the product could only be produced in limited quantities through small devices. Highly unstable, it had to be used within minutes of production. But seeing the strength of the product, Virtus agreed to join the board of directors. As soon as I did that, they said, we're going to give you one of these devices to put in your house. We'd like you to become familiar with it. I started drinking the product that was made in this device, and uh, my thinking cleared up. I had more energy. I felt better than I had for years, and now keep in mind I was in my 60s at that time. And I thought, holy cow, what is this? So I went to the first board meeting and found out that they were flat out of money. They were a million dollars in debt. We said, let's see if we can help them find money. We tried for about 90 days, could not. Eventually, the company uh, folded, and they actually merged it with another company, an energy company. And when that happened, that company started selling off assets. Meanwhile, a family in New Hampshire was embarking on a major change. Jim Pack had been a highly successful consultant in the telecommunications industry. His son, Joe, had secured a position on the United States ski team. Wanting Joe to achieve his dreams, the family moved to Park City to allow Joe to train with the U.S. freestyle team for the 2002 Winter Olympics. So I'm living in a subdivision in Park City, Utah, and after a few years, another gentleman moves in a few houses up from me. This gentleman was named Virtus Norton. Now, Virtus and I became good friends, and actually, we became good golfing buddies. I quickly came to realize that Virtus was something special in terms of his training, his business skills, his analytical ability, his integrity. Everything about Virtus was so much better than any executive, including governors or attorney generals, that I'd ever worked with. He was so competent. I was impressed. I made the decision on the golf course as we golfed you know, week after week. I said, I'm going to do something with this guy. One day we're golfing on the Park City Municipal Golf Course, and he's saying, I'm sitting on the board of this little company, and they've got a terrific product. I use the product, I've just found phenomenal results with this product, but the company's really mismanaged. He said, the product is so good that I'm going to put together an investment company and acquire this product. And he pulled the golf cart over on the fairway, and reached in his back pocket and pulled out a folded check, business check, that was blank, and he said, you got a pen? And I handed him a pen and he wrote a very big check, and he said, let's go do this together. And I said, are you crazy? You don't even know what it is. And I said, Virtus, that's true, but I know everything about you. I knew you've done your due diligence. If you're to the point where you want to form an investment company to acquire this technology, I want to be part of it. Let's do it together. And that was a start in the formation of ASEA. Of anybody that I've known, my favorite person is Jim Pack. I don't think just because he's brilliant. I think it's because he has drive and he engenders trust and confidence. And so we started down the road together. And over the course of a year, we discovered what the product was and why it worked. We developed what's called the mechanism of action. They discovered the product was based on redox biochemistry a new field of science that emerged near the beginning of the 21st century. Redox signaling is a function central to all forms of life. Redox signaling molecules are created within every cell of the body and are vital to the immune system and to cellular repair and replace mechanisms. As one gets older, the body's ability to make these molecules decreases, a function of aging. The product provided a replenishing source of the exact redox signaling molecules the body creates, and in the same balance, enhancing cellular health. Knowing the product shelf life was essential, Virtus and Jim challenged a team of researchers, including Dr. Gary Samuelson, to find a way to stabilize the product. We didn't know if it could be done, and we bought some equipment and kept making uh, product over and over and over again, and we'd run it through the computer. And finally, after months, he finally came in and said, I think I've got the product stabilized. And we started testing it and found out that he had, in fact, stabilized the product. After stabilization had been achieved, Virtus and Jim 
met with a group of university scientists. We had told them that we had stabilized this mix of molecules and they said, no, it can't be done. And we said, no, we have done it. And they said, no, it can't be done. And they were so adamant that they were slapping the table. And we said, well, wait a minute. We'll come back tomorrow and show you the product. So we took the product back the next day. Said, this is stabilized redox signaling molecules. Both positive and negative molecules in the same bottle, stabilized. And they said, how in the world did you do this? So one of the big breakthroughs is the fact that we can stabilize molecules that are, you're not supposed to be able to do that. The molecules in the sea are supposed to be fleeting. They should all return to salt and water in just a matter of minutes, and they don't. Meanwhile, Virtus's son, Tyler, had arrived at the pinnacle of his career in the financial services business. His father took occasion to explain to him the technology he and Jim Pack had acquired. He said to me, this is the product. He reminded me it was made from salt and water. And I was very concerned. At church the following Sunday, I was discussing some of the challenges of some of the members of our congregation. And I had a neighbor friend that we discussed the majority of that meeting who, despite seeing a number of professionals and trying to solve a challenge that he had a significant issue, they were just not able to really help and find a solution for him. And it was then that this product popped into my mind. I wondered and asked, uh, despite my doubts, could this help? Could this make a difference for him? I called dad and he said, of course it will help. Now, I didn't have that conviction at the time. He did and he uh, was willing to get some of that product. We got that product to my neighbor. And uh, from that point forward, I felt confident that I had done my part. And uh, given that I was still doubtful and even fearful, um, I kind of washed my hands from it. I think it was three months later when I received a phone call from the leader of our church. And he said, are you sitting down? And I said, don't start a call like that. What's wrong? And he said, this is good news. Are you sitting down? He proceeded then to tell me that uh, he had just received some very good news, that my neighbor, whom we had given this product to months earlier, had received word that he was in fact improving and had improved a great deal. Of course, the question going through my mind was, well, did he drink this stuff? And uh, that was what my uh, church leader told me. He says, that's why I'm calling. He drank all of it, and he's confident that it's had a huge effect on, on his situation. I called my neighbor, and uh, I needed for him to tell me what he had experienced. And uh, he was quiet for a minute, as I recall, and said, do you have any idea what I think this has done for me and for my family? He began to tell me things that I've now heard multiple times over from people across all of North America on how this product helped him and made a difference for his family. Frankly, this was a problem for me. This became a problem for me. It was my first indication that this could be real, this could be meaningful. By this point, Jim and my father had made a significant commitment to this product. They were moving forward. And I started to question kind of what I was doing and feeling a need to get this product out to the world, watching the impact it was having. And I ultimately resigned in May of 2010 uh, from a significant job, the job I'd spent the better part of 17 years getting to. And uh, it was born of this sense and feeling that this product needed to be given to the world. I've known Tyler Norton for now over 20 years. He is a person who demonstrates integrity in all aspects of his business. He is able to motivate people to do things that are even beyond what they think they can do. You know, this came full circle for me uh, about a few months ago. I happened to be out walking and I looked ahead and saw a family coming towards me on the street. And as they got closer, I realized it was my neighbor that had been benefited by Asiya. And uh, I happened to be on the phone, and so we weren't able to talk. I kind of waved as, he, as we acknowledged each other. And he reached in his back pocket and pulled out a sport pouch of a SIA and then kind of subtly bumped his heart. And we didn't say anything, but I understood completely. It brought home the whole purpose of what we're doing. Now that the product was stabilized, Virtus and Jim began studying distribution models, retail, direct sales, internet, and network marketing. But first, they had a question. We actually wondered if people would drink a product that didn't taste very good, even if there was a perceived health benefit. 
And we said, let's find out. So we decided to find 40 people and create kind of a focus group, and uh, we started giving it to them. Uh, we, we did that for about two months, and we said, let's go out and find out where we are with these 40 people. So when we went out and contacted them, we found out that the 40 people had turned into 135, and the product had been shipped to 20 different countries without our knowing it. And we said, uh, well, we've got the answer we wanted, that people will, I think, buy this product. When they determine that there is a perceived health benefit, they'll buy it. But in the meantime, we had contacted a, a friend, uh, someone that Jim Pack knew, and we had played golf with. And he was running a very big pharmaceutical company in New Jersey, about $10, $11 billion. And he finally agreed to send a group of people out and spend some time with us and see what we had come up with. So four people flew out on a plane, and we met in the conference room we had on the west side of the city for the better part of a day. We spread out all of the research that we had out on the table. And these gentlemen ask all the right questions. They thoroughly went through all of the science that we had, and as they do that, they'd call back to their headquarters and ask questions. About two o'clock in the afternoon, they came to us, and they said, we think you've got something really special here. We're going to write you a check that is large enough that you don't want to talk to anyone else. But there's a catch. And I said, what's the catch? And they said, you've got to shut it down. And I said, shut what down? And they said, you've got 135 people on this product right now. Shut it down. People have problems all the time, and they deal with them as best they can. You're going to have to walk away. And that kind of took us back a little bit. In fact, I said, I, that seems a little harsh to me. And they said, you want to work with us, you walk away. We said, well, we'll let you know. So we ushered them out of the building and we huddled around the conference table. We came to realize that this had changed for us from a business play to something very important. This was a cause, this was a responsibility. We'd seen too many people helped by this product. We realized that the only option before us was network marketing. And in that conference room on that day, we made that decision to form a network marketing company. ASEA LLC opened its doors for business in July 2009 with just a handful of independent associates. Today there are tens of thousands and their ranks are growing exponentially every month. In 2012, the company announced its entry into Europe, the first of many international steps to come. Every company has a vision, but for Virtus and I, our vision is just a little bit different given our age. This is not about making a million dollars. This is about changing a million lives. One of my fondest memories is of a meet a see a meeting that we held in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, we had a huge group of people that came, very impressive group, and a lot of people coming up talking about what the SEA had done for them personally. But at the end of the meeting, they invited me to come up and gave me a small treasure chest wasn't very big, but as you open up the treasure chest, it's filled with letters of gratitude and thanks. It meant a great deal to me. So we came back to uh, Salt Lake City, and I asked <clears throat> our people to go out and find a treasure chest, which we have done, and uh, we have it in the office, and we continue to add letters to it. I have the privilege of going around the country and talking to people about this product. And it's not uncommon at the end of a meeting to have a group of people line up and want to tell me and really thank me, but more thank my dad and Jim for what they've done. And uh, as they tell their stories and I get a chance to look into their eyes and sense their sincerity and the realness of what this has done for them, uh, more than once I've had to step out of the room and find a corner in a hotel somewhere <clears throat> where I could uh, compose myself and uh, <clears throat> get myself in order uh, after hearing how sincere uh, and thankful they are for this product. You know, we started off looking at this as a business opportunity. And uh, as we progressed, it became more of a sense of purpose, but it's much more than that. We're creating a culture here. We're creating a family. I believe that the heart and soul of this company 
is represented in our associates. Our associates becoming is as important to us as them making an income. I don't believe you build checks. I believe you build people. And uh, perhaps one of the greatest blessings of my time here at ASEA is embodied in these marvelous, enriching relationships with wonderful people. People that are desirous to improve their lives, share something meaningful with others, make a difference in the world, and become, become more.